guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. Tonight, it's time to talk about uh, CB antennas. I'm gonna. People are always asking me what's the best antenna to run on a mobile install. There's only one answer to that. No matter how many times companies try to come out with something that is superior, they are always going to be playing catch up with the real deal. And that is what's in here. This is a 102 steel whip that I just uh, ordered and had shipped to me. I'm gonna be replacing a, an older whip antenna with this puppy. Now, 102 steel whips, they have all the advantages because they are a true quarter wave antenna, which is perfect for the 11 meter or CB band radio. But they also have a lot of disadvantages. Those are aesthetics, if you, uh, if you are bothered by things like that. I obviously am not, or look at me, I would be having problems in this world. But with aesthetic issues, the bigger issues for guys and gals that don't care about that is that it tends to tangle with branches and trees and whatnot. So mounting this in a proper location is sometimes, well, we all know the best place to mount a CB antenna is dead smack in the middle of your vehicle. So that would usually be the roof. Well, if you put one of these things on the roof, you're definitely gonna be hitting uh, you know, overpasses and stuff like that. So that's, that kind of rules that out. Some guys have come up with some pretty creative solutions. I've seen mounted bed boxes, you know, like if you're driving in a truck, you'll have like a, a diamond plate uh, bed box that's back there, a toolbox, and they'll mount that thing maybe a little bit lower than the actual top of the cab, and that helps with some of those interference issues while still being in a very central location. So for truck installs, the bed box, or if you have a, a toolbox in the back of your bed, that that would be an ideal location, uh, an ideal compromise location. For most of us, the only option is to mount this thing in a bumper. And that is not an ideal location, but the absolute size, the fact that it's a true quarter wave antenna, oftentimes will make up for in, in imperfect locations. So what you do when you're putting a, a antenna and you're mounting it at a corner of a vehicle is you're creating a directional antenna in, in a way. I mean, it's still going to work pretty well, but the longest range out might be directional. And, and here's a picture of what I'm talking about. I think I've covered this in an older video, but we're going to go through a lot of that same stuff today. But that, that pattern, that radiating pattern may not be where you want. It's the same issue where you put uh, twin antennas, you know, if you have co-phased antennas, and you put them on the uh, windows of a truck, well, they're not far enough apart. I'm talking about passenger vehicle truck. They're not far apart enough to create the perfect co-phase where everything goes out in a circular pattern. In fact, they actually kind of are so close together that the radiating pattern is best in these directions, which if you're driving a vehicle, you usually want the radiating pattern to be best in those directions. So everything's about compromise in this world. But anyway, we will go ahead, we're gonna take the old antenna off the vehicle, I've got a brand new uh, ball for it here that is not rusted up. We're gonna clean all the connections, we'll install that. In another video, I'm installing a, a new radio in the dash of that truck, and then we'll come back here and we will do the uh, SWR adjustments, or let's see where it's at. There's very little you can do with this, but you can add washers if you wanna to try to change it ever so slightly. You can't add a lot of washers, unfortunately, because there's just not a lot of threads and you want to make sure that this thing is well secured to the ball. But we'll go from there. Let's go on outside and take a look. Okay, installing is super easy. As you can see, I've already got one in here, and I'm going to be removing it. But the tools to put one of these puppies together is a 16 and a uh, 13. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew this. Let me just show you on this, the, uh, the static ball up here has come off. While that won't cause huge problems, it can certainly cause static buildup, which could eventually damage a radio, so it's not, it's not ideal. So that's one of the reasons I'm replacing this thing. But this ball, if you can see here, is quite rusted out. It's just had a good life. So we're gonna go ahead and break that loose. I'm gonna try to anyway. I might have to unscrew the whole thing here. Let me get a pair of channel locks. Whew. There you go. Now, I don't know if that's a quality issue or not. It may just be the salt we use up here, but thankfully the connector here was okay. The other one, the water had gotten into, so I'll bet you SWR on this radio had changed quite a bit. 
So it's a good idea to keep an eye on things like this. So what I'm going to do now is just take a, this is all stainless here. I'm going to take a wire brush here and just clean this all off. So I make sure that I have a good connector. All right, so if you're installing an antenna or 102 whip for the first time, this, uh, here's a picture of what you're going to need right here. This is just a through metal mount. And it's very important that you get that little clear washer. You're going to actually drill a hole that's a little smaller than you think you would, and that washer should have a lip on it. You want that lip to be centered in the hole. If it moves to one side or the other, you're actually going to end up grounding the antenna, and you'll never get a decent signal, and you'll also damage your radio. So it's important to remember to put that washer right down through the center of the hole, and then the threaded nut come, or threaded rod comes through that, you screw your nut on the top of it down to hold that all together because that piece coming through the center cannot touch any of the metal on the body of the vehicle. Once we've got that installed, it's time to go ahead and put on our new ball here. This was new old stock. I don't know how long this has been sitting on the shelf, but it's identical in nature to the one that I'm taking off here. So I'll go ahead and screw that on. And I might use my vice grips just to give it a little bit of a snug down, but I don't want to go crazy with this. Like so. And that's just to keep it from flying off while you're driving. Next up, let's break out our brand new 102 steel whip. I'm kind of looking forward to this. I haven't got a new one of these since 1997. <laughs> In fact, the one that I just took off is from 1997. There we go. Oh, I'm liking it already. Beautiful. Nice clean threads on that compared to the one we were taking apart. And the static ball is attached on that, so let's hope for happiness there. I'll go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to screw this on here. Now, some people will put dielectric grease or whatnot on here. I've had fine luck just by going with stock. Again, I'm going to tighten this down a little bit with my 13, but I'm not going crazy. There you go. Just want to make sure it's good. So that's it. The next step to getting one of these things set up right is you can see I'm backed up to a building here. I'm going to pull this thing out and do an open space. I'm going to take my radio out of the dash, hook up my SWR meter, and we're going to do some tests on channel 1, channel 20, and channel 40 to see how it all plays out. All right, once we've moved the vehicle, you can see I've got my antenna attached here, looking good, nice and sturdy. It's time to get inside the car. We're gonna have to, if you have a radio already installed in your car, you're gonna have to pull it out enough to hook up an SWR meter. If you don't have one installed, well, this will show you sort of how to install a single DIN, although I have another video that covers that exact install. So let's hop inside, and with a Phillips head screwdriver on this car, we're gonna get the radio out and see exactly where this meter says this antenna is adjusted to. Okay, so in this car you can see I've got a single DIN stereo and I've got this old uh, Cobra 18 WX ST2. I'm actually going to be replacing that and uh, I'll do this in another video. The Walker 2 is going in its place. But what we need to do is get this out and pulled forward enough that we can hook this, which is a SWR meter, in between here to see exactly where we're at. Now a lot of radios, including the Walker, have an SWR meter built in, but I feel that it's important to be sure that the SWR is okay. So I usually recommend checking it with an analog meter and then once your install is complete, checking it again with the onboard meter if your radio comes equipped with one. For right now though, let's go ahead and pull this bezel off and get this out. Okay, once this is not good. Something something was leaking or something died on there. Luckily the radio still works, but this uh, here's our cable here. We want to unscrew the cable that goes into the back of the radio. 
pop that off like so. I'm just going to let the rest of this dangle here while we play with this. This goes to your antenna, right? So we want to make sure that on the back of our SWR meter that we plug it into the one that says antenna. Then we need a little jumper cable, which I've got right here. And this cable needs to be hooked to the fitting here that says transmitter. And the other half gets rehooked to our little old Cobra. Okay, and now I'll set this thing up. <laughs> we don't really need to see what the radio is doing. Uh, you can take my word for that, I guess. <laughs> and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit if I can. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do this. We're going to be going on calibrate and average. Okay, I'm going to put a key in this thing and turn it on. Okay, so to set this thing up, the first thing we're going to do is put it on channel 1, or, and we're going to key down and bring it up to calibrate. Once it's on calibrate, switch your meter to SWR and key down again. Look at that, 1.1. Okay, and now we want to roll through the band. Okay, there's channel 20. I'm going to go back to calibrate. And then I'm going to go back to SWR. <laughs> That's beautiful, 1.1 again. Okay, and now we'll go to channel 40. Okay, there's channel 40. Once again, we go back to calibrate. And once again, we go back to SWR. Little over 1.1. Beautiful, though, all the way around. That is incredible. That's the beauty of a 102 whip. Now, occasionally, you'll have enough mass in the body of the vehicle to throw off the SWR, in which case you would use a simple flat washer to raise or lower the SWRs until you reach something that made you happy. So that is it. This is the install. I would now go ahead and reinstall this radio or install a radio. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be installing the President Walker. If you want to watch that video, it'll be out in a week or two. And uh, that's it. I mean, the 102 Steel Whip, it's a quarter wave antenna. No matter what the manufacturers say, they can't outperform a genuine one quarter <laughs> wave antenna so that is why the 102 whip rules the roost i'm eric the owner of farpoint farms i hope you enjoyed this video on how to install and calibrate your 102 steel whip until next time take care there's always something that needs a little fixing on farpoint farms Sweet liberty sows its seed at bar.